Hello and welcome. My name is Sanjay Soni. Here is Rafat who will be talking about Azure Cosmos DB change feed. Let's get started. Hi Rafat, how are you doing today? Good, very well. Awesome, great to have you here with us. Thank you. And what do you do at Microsoft? I'm a program manager in Cosmos DB. Mm -hmm. So let's get started with our uh, video today. What are we going to talk about? We are going to talk about change feed. It's the most important feature of Cosmos DB. And this change feed lights up many, many scenarios, and we are going to talk about them in more detail. Mm -hmm. And I will show you also how easy and simple it is to write a code to consume it. All right then. So what is change feed? So change feed, in a very simple term, it is exposing the Cosmos DB logs to the end user. Uh, so using change feed, you can see when the data is changing inside Cosmos DB, so you will, can get the inserts and updates. And it is enabled by default, so you don't have to do anything. No configuration is needed for to enable this. And you can read change feed from any read region uh, or any write region like any other Cosmos DB operations you do. And each change of the document appeared exactly once in the change feed. And client manages their checkpoint logic, and you don't have to worry. We have libraries about it. I will talk more about it in detail. And the most recent change of a given document is included in the change log. And you know, intermediate change, you may not find it because we keep the last copy of the document. And change feed is sorted by order of the modification. So within each partition key value, you will get the documents in a sorted order. And change feeds are available in partition key ranges. And this capability allows changes from large collection to be processed in parallel by multiple consumers. And I will talk more about it in detail in, later on. And uh, application can request multiple change feeds simultaneously on the same collection. I see. Is this concept similar to the database uh, logs in a way? Exactly. So it uh, exposes the Cosmos DB logs mm -hmm. to, uh, to the outside. So I know you talked about create and updates. What happens to delete? You know, can I get deletes in the change feed? So delete is coming soon. Mm -hmm. uh, but today, what you can do is you can use a soft delete. Uh, by that, I mean you can put a flag or an attribute in the document, say delete, and turn it on or say yes, true, or false. And then that document will show up in the change feed. And then you can put a TTL on that doc. And that doc will be deleted in a few seconds or a few minutes. So that's how you can get the delete from the change feed. I see. So can you please give me some real world examples where I can use change feed? Yes, yeah, sure. Let's look at my second slide for that. Before we talk about the real life example, I would like to talk about what all we can do with change feed. As you can see that it really lights up lots of scenario and really, you know, uh, sky is the limit of your, you know, it depends on your imagination. So as you can see in the slide that I can have a Azure function listening to the change feed. So what happens when the doc, doc comes in the change feed, your this Azure function is called, and then you get all the documents which are changed as a parameter, as a list in the function. We will show in more detail in the code. But once you get all the docs in your code, and that code can be in C Sharp, Java, or JavaScript, and then you can do whatever you want to do from there on. So you can basically, you are firing a trigger for any change happening in Cosmos DB. So as I'm showing in this slide that you can have an Azure function wake up because of change feed. You can then send a notification. You can you know, wake up any Azure apps, logic apps. So you can do a lot of things, as you can imagine, right? All these Azure services are connected by all these uh, different services. That's awesome. So they all can be connected. And the second thing is, you can do this big data processing also. We have our own connector for Databricks Spark or HD Insight Spark. You can, using our connector, you can listen to the change feed. And as the data is coming in in Cosmos DB, you can do the real-time processing in Spark. Oh, wow. so, so, you know, when I say Spark, I mean, you know, you can do a massive amount of big data load you can take there because 
this change fleet can have you know, millions and millions of records per second. So it can be pretty heavy in data. And the third thing you can do is you can, listening to the change feed using Azure function, you can move that data to the cold storage. Okay. So there's, there's a um, lot of scenarios are there where you have the data coming in Cosmos DB. You want to do some processing on the hot data, but uh, you want to keep that data, say, for three months for reporting and all that. And then you can put a TTL that after three months, that data will be gone away. And archived or? And gone. archived in the cold storage. So that's what another thing you can do with, with change feed. And as you can see, that you can connect a Azure function with change feed. So you were talking about real life examples, right? So I'll tell you one example is, you have all these cars with IoT sensor. Of course. And if a car have any accident, hmm. now, that IoT device can send the data to the you know, uh, control center and the data can go directly in Cosmos DB to be stored as a source of truth. And then listening change feed, you can activate ambulance, activate police cars, yeah. and you know, fire trucks and all that. So all this can happen within you know, five seconds of accident happening and police cars can be dispatched to the location. So that's one of the example of using change feed. Yeah. And as you mentioned, we can use Cosmos DB with Azure Data Bricks, of course, mm -hmm. with Spark and also with our role, other storage as well. Right. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. So now can we see a live demo? Yes. I will show you how easy it is to consume change feed in, in, in C Sharp. So I will open VS Code and we'll quickly write the code here and we'll just consume some changes happening in Cosmos DB and we'll see how quick and easy it is. All right, looking okay. forward to it. Okay, Sanjay. So we will write it from scratch, a code to consume change feed. Okay. So I'll start my command prompt. Let's go quickly make another directory here. So, and then I will say func init. Okay, so this is the library of Azure function, and with that, I get this func init command, and as you can see, it's showing me all the options that how I want to write this Azure function. I have option of .NET, Node, or Python, so I will choose .NET here, and once it's initialized, then I can say func new. And now it is giving me all the options that I can write for this Azure function. And Cosmos DB trigger is here. So here, I choose Cosmos DB trigger, and then I'll just give the name for the function, and I can say Cosmos DB trigger, enter. And that's it. So, so far I did just two things. Func init, func new. And this is writing a template for me, and it will be finished in a few seconds and then we will open it in Visual Studio Code. So here, now this code is already written for me. So if I see the CS file, you can see that Azure function is written here, a skeleton of it. I have to change this database name. I have a database already created, uh, that's called IoT, collection name is IoT, and then I have to define a connection string. This connection string is actually defined in local setting, and let me just copy this file, because I don't want to type all this, but I will quickly talk about this. Here is the DB connection defined, which is talking about what is the endpoint of my Cosmos DB, and if you go to Cosmos DB, here is my uh, account, and when I click on keys, I see all this connection string. So I just pick up this connection string, bring it back here, and put it in DB connection, okay? And worker runtime and Azure web, job web storage, I'm leaving it as for development storage, but in real life, you will put your storage string here. Now, here I'm seeing one message, it's saying detected an Azure function project in folder. Um, so initialize for optimal use, and I should say yes. Okay. And it will do um, all that. 
and I click restore. Now let's go and update my code here. So here my connection string is here and I just put here db connection. So if you see what I have done so far, nothing but putting my database name, collection name, and connection name. And this is the function called run, and it is getting an input, which is basically a list of documents. So now when this function is running, and every five seconds it will be called from uh, change feed, and I will get in the input, the list of documents, I'll get the documents which have changed or inserted. So as you can see, it is so easy and simple to consume a uh, change feed. Now let's run and see how, well, how it works. Let's see. Now I'm running it. While this is running it, Let's go back to our Cosmos DB and try to insert a document in the collection. So here I'm coming to Data Explorer, opening my IoT. This is my database and this is my collection and this is my documents. I see there's no document, it's empty. So I'm going to add a new document here and let's call it new document. And before I save, I see my function is running and it is ready, ready to listen. And what, does hap what happens here, it's just gonna display this information, the document modified and first document ID. It's going to show us here. Now, let me save this document. I save this document, as you can see, it is showing now one document here in Cosmos DB. And here, we seen one document modified, and first document ID is new document, and you can see that uh, it triggered this function, and I can write any code here. I can, you know, kickstart any logic app, start the notification, start call different Azure function, so I can do multiple things here. So before we go from here, I would like to show you one more quick thing that I can debug also here. So I'm putting a control here, a control break, and then I'll go and insert another document, new document, and let's call this document AAA and save it. And within a few seconds, we'll see this document. I got the breakpoint here, and I can look at the input, and when I take my mouse there, I can see the whole document, the ID is AAA, and all the information about the document. Wow. So this is how, and so simple it is to consume change feed with, with you know, Visual Studio Code, writing a code in C Sharp. But before we leave this session, I would like to quickly talk about a couple of other things. I'll go back to my slides, mm -hmm. okay? Now, as we've seen how easy it is to consume, change feed. Now let's look at here. Uh, one of the scenario is that you can light up your whole microservice architecture with this change feed. And as you can see here in the slide, I can have this different services listening to the same change feed and they can get activated whenever anything they, uh, they find in the document for which they are interested in, right? Um, scenario, um, you have an e-commerce site, somebody uh, some user comes and purchases something, you are listening for a checkout and you send them a thank you mail. You can kickstart the billing process, you can kickstart the shipping process and all that. So that microservice architecture can be started by listening to the change feed. Second uh, example is that you can create this materialized view. By materialized view, I mean, suppose you are a company with, who is listening to the IoT sensor data, and the IoT is sending you data every second. But you are interested in the data for every minute or maybe every hour, the aggregated, but you want to act if something happens within second. So what you can do is, listening to the change feed, 
you make this materialized view in the sense you are listening to the change feed every second the data is coming. If data is the temperature is say in norm, you don't have to do anything and you just keep calculating the average and count and things like that. And then after an hour, you create another view of your data that you have this temperature aggregated by hours or so. That's one of the options, right? Here in the example, we are showing that you can have this materialized view that all the subscriptions are coming and you can count and you can create another sum of all the subscription and things like that. So again, uh, there are many, many scenarios you can think about where you can use this change feed and create the materialized view. But in that same example, if some anomaly actually happened during that duration, you can then... act on that too. Okay. Exactly, exactly. And for that's what it is used mostly when I want to act in the real time on the real data. But I want to save also data. So this pattern is much Best better. Best of both worlds. Exactly. So your data is saved, and then you are reacting on the data which is coming out of the change field. Okay. okay? And the last one is... Uh, replicating the data. So you can, you will listening to this change feed and you can move this data to cold storage, to you know Azure Data Lake okay. and blob storage and things like that. So these are the few things you can do with this change feed. And just last one more thing, that there are three ways you can consume change feed. One is using the Cosmos DB SDK itself. Um, and then to make your life much more simpler, we wrote change feed processor SDK. And in that, if you use that SDK, it makes your life much simpler. So your code becomes an, uh, in an observer pattern. So your code is called whenever data changes. So you don't have to worry much about the checkpoint and all that, as I was talking in beginning, that checkpoint is managed by this SDK. And the last one, which is the easiest and you know most recommended, is just use Azure Function. As you've seen, we we written we wrote this function within two three minutes, right? Yeah. So that's how you can consume Change Feed. That's awesome. First of all, it's great to see your passion for this uh, Change Feed as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for being here with us today. Thanks. Thank you for watching this micro learning readiness video about Azure Cosmos DB. To learn more, please visit azure.com forward slash CosmosDB. Please stay tuned for more videos.